Mary Daly, fascinating woman because she was once a dropout and now she's heading up the San Francisco Fed. Yeah, it is uh, quite a story, and it's also the least surprising, perhaps, Fed pick we've had in a very long time. She's a favorite of people there. She's been on the speech trail uh, since John Williams left back in April, and uh, she's uh, represented the bank at the most recent Jackson Hole conference. So uh, there was never really a whole lot of doubt that she would be the pick, although they interviewed, they said, 283 people wow. for the job. I I've spoken to a lot of Fed officials here at the Brookings conference on the financial crisis. They all have great things to say about her. Uh, her bio, as you mentioned, doesn't do her justice. I mean, here's what it officially says. Take a look. Uh, she graduated from the University of Missouri, Kansas City. She went on to Syracuse to get her doctorate in economics, joined the San Francisco Fed in 1996. She was promoted to research director in December of 2016. Her focus as an economist has been on labor markets and income distribution, mm. uh, which could be uh, quite useful going forward for the Fed. But what's not in her bio, as, uh, as you mentioned, Caroline, is the most interesting thing. She dropped out of high school at age 16 when her parents got divorced. She drove a donut delivery truck to make ends meet. Donut. She worked at a deli and in the lingerie department of a big box store. She told us in a 2015 interview her main goal in life was to get a better department at Target. Hmm. Instead, uh, she had an adult friend and mentor who convinced her to go back to school and get her GED. And she went from there to the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Uh, she developed an interest in economics, went on to get her doctorate, and went on to the San Francisco Fed. Now she's going to run it. That is an incredible bio. And, of course, the San Francisco Fed is home to two um, female presidents. You had Janet Yellen, of course, from the San Francisco Fed as well. How important is the post of the San Francisco Fed president? Because, of course, Janet Yellen went on to become eventually the Fed chief, the Fed chair. And John Williams, the previous San Francisco Fed president, is now head of the New York Fed, arguably the most important Fed regional bank. Well, it's definitely been a launching pad for the last two. Uh, Janet Yellen, obviously very well known. John Williams, well known inside the Fed for the research he's done. And as research director, as I said, Mary Daly has had a lot of experience. She also uh, did some work for Janet Yellen when Yellen was there. So obviously she's stepping into some big shoes, but everybody thinks she can fill them. Talk about the job market perspective that she's going to be bringing, because this has been the big conundrum of the recovery in many ways is the lack of wage growth. Yeah, a lot of people are wondering wh where she's going to fall on the hawk dove spectrum. You'd probably call her a Janet Yellen dove. Her work has focused on uh, whether or not uh, we see uh, income equality in uh, the job distributions and whether or not uh, the job market is functioning as it should. And she has suggested in recent speeches that maybe it is not and that uh, the inflation uh, aspect of higher wages when job markets get tight, uh, that relationship has broken down. So it suggests that she would view things the same way as Janet Yellen did, that you let the economy run and try to bring as many people into the labor force as possible and don't worry about uh, inflation as much as long as it's not going well over your target. So as that debate continues, she's probably a vote on the uh, on the dovish side. OK, so she begins October 1st. She's going to miss the September 26th FOMC meeting, but she'll be there for the November 8th meeting, uh, in, at which the Fed is probably not going to do anything because of the elections and all that. But at what point does she begin to make speeches and start uh, sharing some of her views? Well, she could start sooner than most Fed presidents, most new Fed presidents. The ones we've had uh, over the recent year or so it took a while to get up to speed. But obviously, Mary Daly's been at the Fed for a very long time, understands monetary policy. She's been out giving speeches since they didn't have a Fed president. She's been representing the bank around the district. So you could hear from here fairly quickly. And uh, Wall Street obviously will be looking to see if my analysis of her is correct and where she falls on the spectrum, particularly since she will have a vote in December. And of of course, that's the key meeting for a lot of people uh, on the street. Uh, does the Fed do that fourth rate move? Right, we've been talking about her throughout this conversation, not just Mary Daly, but also Janet Yellen. And she's been speaking just today as well, Mike. And you've been looking at her saying she's going to be backing lower for longer in terms of rates. But notably, she also seems to be sounding the alarm bells for the U.S. in terms of making the global financial insecurities worse. That's what the U.S. is doing. What do you read into this speech? Well, she's talking about the impact that the United States has on the global economy, and in particular the dollar, and obviously what the Fed does influences that. Uh, she's not saying that we're deliberately messing up the world, but the uh, Fed policy does have consequences. They have to take those into account. 
Their job is primarily to look out for the U.S. economy, but as the world is affected by what happens here, it feeds back into the United States, so that's something they have to take a look at. You know, you, know, her, you mentioned her speech on Lower for Longer. I, I'm calling that the Wall Street traders, I knew it, I knew it speech, because basically <laughs> she said we should adopt as a formal process the idea of leaving rates lower for longer. And, you know, over the last uh, few years of her term, everybody was saying, we think Janet Yellen just wants to leave rates where they are uh, for longer so that they can bring more people into the labor force. And now she's formalizing that as a proposal.